So I promised an advanced mage guide and here it is. But unlike most advanced guides, I'm not going to be saying numbers at you. Instead I will be going over tips for each boss and dragon soul that you should be playing fire for. Starting with Morchok. For this fight it's a good idea to pick up the talent Molten Shields and create a macro, like so, that casts Mage Ward on cooldown whenever you try and use Scorch. Leading me to my second tip, ensure that you cast Scorch just before the resonating crystal explodes, as casting anything but this spell would result in an effective spell interrupt. Lastly, just before he casts Earthen Vortex, refresh Living Bomb if there is less than 6 seconds remaining on its duration as you will be unable to cast during this time. Also as a note to all ranged, during Black Blood if you stand slightly to the left or right of a pillar cluster, you will take no damage and can still freely cast at the boss. Your Sarge Only two tips, ensure that you are refreshing the living bomb as you swap to kill a fresh set of ooze, and if you do not have 4 piece tier 13, save combustion for the following combination, red, yellow and black, where you should have two sets of adds during one ooze cycle. Use combustion and impact in combination on the second set of adds, as you will almost immediately thereafter have to swap to new oozes, and you need to ensure that the black adds die before a new cycle begins. Note, it is also not worth manually dotting the adds, instead lay down your AoE as normal whilst keeping your Sarge targeted with Living Bomb active, and use Impact on activation. Hagara If healing or positioning is an issue for your raid, then you can use Ice Block to effectively reset the stacks or even mitigate totally the damage of Ice Lance. Second, during Ice Phage, multi-dot with Living Bomb as much as possible. Not only will it allow you 10% more haste from Pyromaniac, but will also drastically increase your raid's DPS. Blink can also be used to go through an ice wall and allow more hard casts on fireball during the pillars. Third, for lightning phase, in order to make it easier on the healers, swap to mage armor during this time. This will allow for 14% extra magic mitigation during this phase. Just remember to swap back to molten armor when her shield drops. Leading me to my fourth point, when ice tombs land, use blast wave and dragon's breath if in range and attempt to get an impact proc. Don't waste any more than these two spells trying to get this proc, as after that you're wasting valuable DPS time on the tombs, and you are risking your teammates lives. Also, you cannot protect yourself from Ice Tomb by using Ice Block. Ultraxian, I only have one main tip for this fight, don't click on the blizzard button, instead use this macro, it will allow for a fire blast when exiting the twilight realm, giving you a little extra damage. Warmaster, ensure that you multi-dot the drakes as they fly overhead, including Goriana during the transition into phase 2. To assist with targeting, I recommend this macro. Also, if range DPS is lacking and you're getting two void zones before she lands, it is well worth using combustion in line with time warp while she is still airborne, though this will reduce your overall damage by getting one less combustion spread to Warmaster while she is on the ship. It is more important not to have as many void zones and thusly, more safe area from Shockwave. Use Impact whenever possible to spread a fresh living bomb to Blackhorn. Don't waste time multi-dotting, as Goriana's damage is your main priority. Note, Blink can be used to dodge any Shockwave, no matter how far away you are from the boss.